And this is Billy. And this is an episode of Wow, wow That's, that's deep. deep. And today we're talking about Juvenoia. Juvenoia, what's that? Well, James, I would say that the probably the origin of the term Juvenoia is from the words juvenile and paranoia. Because today mm-hmm. we're talking about generational gaps and the perceptions that we have of other generations, namely how the older generation criticizes the younger generation and how it's kind of like a timely or it's a. Well, it might seem like it's just baby boomers attacking millennials, but it's gone on way longer than that. Yeah. Centuries. I mean, ancient history. Oh, There's yeah. There's examples. Honor of thy stuff. father and thy mother. Yeah. It, it was a commandment. But it's super interesting, really interesting uh, topic to talk about, especially in this day and age because we have so much cultural shifts so rapidly. I mean, technology has changed so rapidly uh, within the last few decades. I mean, James, you remember back in the day we used to like used to like play Moon video boots. games by like sitting on the floor. I mean, like I played an Atari when I was at my yeah, youngest. I mean, that right. was before I had a PlayStation. I didn't get a PlayStation. Until I was like seven, I mean, I I I look at it nostalgia nostalgia wise towards you know video games because that's like what I grew grew up with and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I can understand yeah. that. But it's a it's a cool progression that you see, you know oh, yeah. how how much things have changed just in the past two decades has been insane, crazy. And you know, back when we were an agrarian society, we didn't have those you know such rapid changes. Hmm. So um. What happened was the uh, Industrial Revolution. Yep. You know, after the Civil War, we're talking around the 1920s. It's whenever people start getting paranoid about alcohol and moralism and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Around that same time, they actually invented as a marketing strategy the concept of teenagers. Yeah, we weren't. We were. They weren't. We we weren't. Oh my goodness. (laughs) I'm older than that now. Yeah. Yeah. They're not a. They weren't a thing until then. That's no, right. teenagers as a demographic wasn't even considered a thing until the 1920s. Now, you could argue that adolescence is in itself its own stage of life, and maybe we've always perceived it as that. But the mm-hmm. thing is, is during those times, it was... Kids could work. They could have real jobs. Well, yeah, during this time, they could have an actual job that pays. And so, you know, businesses are going to step up and want to market to that demographic. Yeah. We need to put a label on them. Teenager. Teenager. Which is, I guess, like between ages, like between childhood oh, and adult. Oh, you think that's it? I, I, think, I figured it was just, be, yeah, those kids from 13 to yeah, 19. Well, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know where I was. I was thinking I was thinking of tweens between I, childhood and teenager. No, I think teenager is literally to represent the numbers <laughs> of 13 to yeah. 19. But all of these generations, you know, they have labels attached to them. You have... I mean, as far back as, you know, pre-Civil War, you've got, like, the Transcendental Generation. Uh, Post-Civil uh, War, you have the Gilded Generation. Baby uh, boomers. You get baby boomers. Millennials yeah. who are killing everything. Yeah, you've got Generation X, Generation Y. Then you've mm-hmm. got the Millennials, which yeah. is our demographic. The and ones the that ones are, we're going to be focusing on because, you know, it affects that's us That's what we most, are. Yeah, it affects us mostly. But then so, we have one more. What? What's after us? The upcoming Generation Z. Yeah. Yeah. The ones yeah. that all just want to die. No, they're the ones <laughs> they're the ones that are gonna kill us all. Oh really? Yeah, it's the worst oh, period God. generation. No, see period. James, the whole point of this while well, that's deep is so that we can understand how juvenile works and and understand how to identify it. Because I think it's important, James, that when you know, as we grow up we don't we don't carry on that legacy. It's cause it's a logical fallacy. But the thing is, we're always going to do it. We're never going mean, to be able to change it. There's an argument that it is it is evolutionary biology, that it's actually built into our genes as kind of like a survival mechanism. Yeah, and, and I the, mean, think about it. Yeah. Adults, parents in yeah. particular, are examples of genetic perfection. Like, they made it. Yeah. And they were able to do what we're supposed to do, produce offspring. Well, I wouldn't say perfection. Like, evolution only requires that you meet the minimum requirements of survival. Well, okay, they're a genetic success. Yes. They successfully, yeah, they successfully repopulated yeah. the gene pool. Yeah, so at, we're an extension of them. As, yeah. you know, we are their offspring, so we are an extension of their legacy. And the reason why these generations are kind of sp- sliced up at 20-year intervals is because of that parent-child connection. 
in my opinion. I don't know if it's actually explicitly said like that, but I, I interpreted it this mm-hmm. way. But, um, but the reason why they're, they're separated by a 20 year gap is because we are in two different stages of our lives than our parents are. Our parents are, you know, entering their twilight years. I mean, going on into old age, that they're transitioning from middle age to old age. Yeah. And so as they're doing that, they're more concerned about their offspring, their children, because they see them as a continuation of their legacy. Because it's like uh, I mentioned this in a previous episode. It's like confronting your own mortality and knowing that you're yeah. not going to be sticking around forever. So it, it it's a like generational disappointment. In when the, we don't the, act exactly like they Yeah, did. when we don't mimic behaviors that they perceive that they did at the time. But we're going to also talk a little bit about nostalgia, which g- goes hand in hand with juvenoia. Mm-hmm. Because nostalgia is a predisposition. It is a bias that's built into our brains that makes us look into the past with uh, rosy colored glasses. You know, yeah. we're always looking at it in a, in a positive light. We can look back on nev- negative experiences, but with seeing how things have turned out afterwards, we see it in a rosy light because it's not so bad now, you know, yeah. that's the kind of frame. So we don't remember things accurately to how they actually were at the time. Well, no, of course not. We see only the positive things. Yeah. That's, that's how you make it through life. Yeah. It's yeah, it's a great survival mechanism, but not good for discerning differences between generations. Yeah, no, that's true. Have you read all of the articles about us, James? Uh, oh, about millennials. Us? Yeah, yeah, about we millennials. millennials. We're killing oh, everything, dude. We are the destruction of Earth itself. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're killing the di- <laughs> let, let, You know what? Reddit has this great list of all the things baby boomers. Have said we're no, not, killing. No, not Reddit. It's Ranker. Oh, sorry, Ranker. Sorry, it's Ranker.com. If you, you can check out this list, uh, it's at www.ranker.com slash list slash everything millennials are killing. And it's by Mar- Marielle Loveland. And it's pretty funny. Yeah. Some of them are, are really funny. So we're going to go over a bunch of these. Why so, don't we just do the top 10? Top 10? Starting with number 10. S- start. Well, it goes all the way to like 20... Yeah, but we it goes don't all the way to twenty. It goes, dude. Up. It goes way too long. It goes, it goes for to, to twenty nine. Yeah, which is I don't want to end on an odd number. So let's just do the top ten things we're we're, we're killing. Uh, okay, cool. So starting with ooh, number, yeah. Roxy, what are you doing? My dog's acting crazy right now. All right, so apparently we're killing relationships, James. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but then again, why? Why are we killing them? <laughs> It says, uh, ever feel like every millennial dude is a fuckboy? <laughs> Probably because they are. <laughs> Millennials are apparently killing relationships. According to research conducted by Gallup, only 16% of millennials were married and 14% were living with their significant others in 2014. I think that's just our generation. The, the rest of them were apparently running, running around, around in sin, sin and swiping. swiping Tinder. <laughs> it's a poon harvester. <laughs> <laughs> or a fuckboy finder. Yeah. It's a fuckboy combine. Yeah. Um, I think that's just a difference in the way we perceive how the progression of like a relationship should go. Yeah. I just like, don't think we're concerned about marriage anymore. Well, it's, I, I mean, I mean, some people are for maybe religious reasons or, you know, even romantic also, reasons. Also, it's a financial burden and you got to remember, we're also in a student debt crisis. Yeah, that's true. So there's, and that plays, I think one of the largest roles in our development. Well, you're in a successful yeah. relationship. Are you killing, are you killing relationships? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not averse to getting married in the future. It's just it's something I want to be sure about. And and that's one of the things that I valued was living with somebody before making that commitment. Because a lot of people, you don't really know them until you live with them. That is very true. And so, yeah, so it just makes logical sense for me to, you know, cohabitate. Spend some time. Yeah. Spend some time. Get to know each other. We're not killing relationships. No. But we are killing divorce rates, apparently, because that is also on this list. And I think that that has a lot to do with cohabitation before because marriage. people aren't getting married so quickly. Yeah. They're not marrying their high school sweetheart. Or if they get a girl pregnant, they're not going, well, now I have to marry you. Yeah. Which, that's a whole different debate on whether or not you... I mean, that, personally, my only my opinion on it is, yeah, I would get married. And, you know, it would be... That would be that. But I, that is one little conservative thing that, you know, I hang on to. It's just, Aww. that's just how I am. I, I want to be a good father. If that ever comes, I don't want it to, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get yeah. it. All right. So apparently we're also killing the real estate industry, which thank freaking God, cause they're a ripoff. 
They really are, guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, in a lot of circumstances, it actually is better to rent, regardless of what baby boomers, you know, they hate the concept of renting because they're like, you're never going to, you're never going to, you know, actually own the house that you're renting. You're just giving money to some guy. But, you know, the way I look at it is I don't have to cut my own grass. Like, if I need pest control, I just call a guy. Plumbing issue, just call him. It's not out of my pocket. It's not my property. Well, well, There's plus, a lot more look at how long it takes commitment. to own a house anyway. Yeah. You buy a house when you're 30, you don't own it until you're like 60-something, 70-something. Yeah, that's true. Like, so you don't even... Basically, all the time you're really enjoying the house... Yeah. ...is while you're still paying for it. Yeah. When and, you're done paying for it, all the kids have moved out. Well, yeah, and you're true. there with your partner, and, or you're alone. And you know, I saw uh, somebody posted a meme that was like, you know, you spend roughly eighty percent of your time at your workplace or outside of the home that you're you're using your work to pay for. So you're not even really getting to enjoy the home you're living in because yeah. you're having to work all the time, and basically leave it behind all the time to pay it off. Exactly. You don't really get to you know enjoy it until you retire. And pff, hell, I'm not. I'm not, like, I don't have rosy, you know, Here's glasses telling me that like, I'm going to ever get to do that. I mean, I hope so. Baby boomers complain that yeah. we're killing this market. But think about this. What what always happens in, like, movies and TV shows? What? They have a house. They retire. The kids are gone. So they sell the house and get an apartment. Or they get a smaller house. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it's just ridiculous. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I always used to tell that to my dad. I was like, look, you better be nice to me. Or I won't come and feed you Jello. Uh, we're apparently killing breakfast cereal. What? Yeah, it says from 2009 to 2014, cereal sales dropped by five percent. You know what? I bet. Of course, I, I bet millennials lot, are yeah. to blame. <laughs> but I bet a lot of breakfast has dropped. I just don't. I never eat breakfast. Like I never eat when I first get up. I might make something to munch on like an hour later or something, yeah. but... Well, apparently it's mm -mm. because we're switching more to like uh, cereal bars or granola bars because it says 40% of millennials reported that cereal was just too inconvenient because they had to clean up after eating. Man, I mean, come on. You just rinse it out in the sink. Clean it later. No, Go to work. No, just just don't make dishes at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you would just buy a bunch of... Plastic dishes, paper plates, paper plates. It's terrible for the environment, man. I'm just Fuck saying. Fuck the like, environment. By the time it gets real bad, I'll be dead anyway. Come on, that's something we should be concerned about. No, that's for the next generation. <laughs> Apparently, we're killing pants because in 2018, legging sales surged with some retailers. Were, uh, some retailers reporting as much as a 95 percent increase in legging sales from the previous year. So we like them tight yoga pants, especially on women. I'm just saying. There's something that you just can't beat. Hey, hey, <clears throat> hey, man. Hey, man. Not cool. <laughs> oh, God. That's a good callback. That was Not an episode cool. from a long time ago. That was one of our very first episodes. Dude, that was back in January? Maybe. Or February? We've been at this for, oh, God, almost a year? We've been at it for over six months, man. Man. Uh, we're killing chain restaurants, which I can get behind because, uh, you know, I've recently looked at the numbers, and it is way cheaper and often tastes better if you eat local. Go to a local restaurant somewhere that's a small business. Local person Funny owns it. Why do you bring this up? And I'm, it's a non sequitur. Because these chain restaurants are so damn expensive now. But why were all the restaurants in town closed today? Did you notice that? What? Uh, the hibachi grill, the sushi hibachi yep. place was closed. The Grecian was closed. Like the only places open were like fast food restaurants today. Huh. I wonder what that's about. I don't know. That's why I was wondering if it was on the news or something. Huh. I don't know if this is a. I don't know if this is a um, holiday. Is it a holiday? I don't, I don't think it is. I don't know. No, it's just so I, you brought up yeah, the restaurants, and I was like, "That is weird." That's weird. All the because I, I went to yeah. a few different places. Well, for I was dinner asleep tonight. all day. You know, we're night shifters, yeah. so constantly asleep. All right, going back to the list, mm -hmm. we are also killing uh, canned tuna. Yeah, Which, you good. know I don't like can you know it's I don't like canned tuna. I only like a good fresh tuna. Dude, steak. fuck off! Your mom's tuna ball is like the greatest <laughs> fucking thing on earth, and I doubt she uses fresh tuna. I hope she hears you say you. You always compliment her on her tuna ball. It's the best. It's literally the best dish ever. Yeah, she needs to market it and sell it in supermarkets. Yeah, but you know these comparisons they they're time they're timeless. Like every yeah. single generation has always looked on the on the next generation in a negative light. For example, yeah, in 1871, uh -huh. 
This is what the Su Sunday Magazine published an article saying. Now we fire off a multitude of rapid and short notes instead of sitting down to have a good talk over a real sheet of paper. You might think that's talking about texting. Yeah. It's actually talking about people no longer writing letters and instead using the beep, 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 Oh, the telegraph. The telegraph, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and there's more. Like, yeah. Well, and also they used a lot of shortening of the, you know, they used a lot of those, you know, early text speak, like R for R. And, you mm -hmm. know, the letter U for you and stuff, because they charged per letter to send yeah, those so telegraphs. They send... So they would send them as short as possible. So they were like, oh, it's degrading, you know, the English language and all this other stuff, which, you know, now that smartphones are a thing, I don't see a lot of people texting like that anymore. You know, I think it was just because we had the numeric pad. And we so had, we had to hit it so many times yeah, just to get the It was letter. convenient to shorten it yeah. then, but now you've got a full keyboard. Well, I mean, also another... All my friends text me in correct grammar, punctuation and all. I mean, so, that's I mean, true. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I don't know if another it's just our generation it, thing. Another example of it, yeah. though, is you might remember vaguely, but when you... There used to be these things listeners called payphones, and they used to be like everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you were out and you were drunk and it was three in the morning and you needed somebody to come get you and you didn't have any change, you would call collect. Yeah. Because there's constant examples of people calling collect and then being like, you received a call from, hi, it's Bobby. Hi, it's Bobby. It's a boy. <laughs> like telling their parents that they're... They, they have they, a grandkid that's oh, a boy. Oh, okay. Like, that was a Geico commercial as he yeah. called. And, like, you have a call from, hi, it's Bob, it's a boy. And he goes, do you accept the charges? No, click. Yeah. And the wife's like, well, who is that? That's oh, Bob. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> is the baby name Bob? No, That'd Bob. Hi, it's Bob, it's a boy. Yeah. Is, hi, it's Bob. Yeah. Their son. I, I, know, I know. The baby's a boy. I, I know. I understand. I'm just saying, like, imagine a baby named Bob. Like you name your kid Robert, but no, from you birth even, you call you him Bob. You don't even name him Robert. You literally <laughs> name him Bob. Last name sponge. Pants. <laughs> Last name Pants. It's missing the sponge in the square. <laughs> My name's Bob Pants. Yeah. So, but I mean, there are there are ancient examples of this too, like the Egyptians saying that the younger generation was rude. Um, you've got uh, ancient Greeks. Yep, fourth century Aristotle. Yeah, remarked that the youth's mistakes were due to excess and vehemence. Yeah. They think they know everything. Yeah, their engravings from the 1600s. Yeah, I mean it's a it's something that's always been and always will be. And so, I mean, my general consensus is, you know, the this generation, are, the the kids are all right. Yeah, the kids are all right. The businesses they come and go, you know, with the fluctuation of the markets and stuff. We may be killing like the diamond industry and stuff like that. But when well, you that's think about the diamond it, industry is a racket from the get go. Yeah, man. I mean, like the thing is, is that are these terrible things to be getting rid of? Like, okay, yeah, we're killing some jobs here, but we're creating new jobs in other markets that we value. You more. know what we need to kill? You know, what? Lobster. Lobster. Eating lobster. Lobsters. At least for a while until they proliferate, because yeah. at one time they were so common they were that they called, were called the, the cockroach of the sea. They fed yeah. them to prisoners, yeah, because it was easy to get them. Yeah, and then it, they started marketing it as a you know a, a rich person like luxury <laughs> dish. They raised the prices of them. When in doubt, pinky out. <laughs> this is alluding a little bit to our next uh, podcast that's going to be coming out of our hot takes on conspiracy theories. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, they're. You know, like De Beers Corporation with the with the diamond industry. Mm -hmm. You know, they specifically bought you know the all of these diamond mines. You know, made a forced scarcity of it, and then raised the prices of it, and said, you know what, uh, men out there who want to love your if, wife. yeah, if you love your wife or your future wife, then you're gonna get engaged to her with a diamond ring, and that diamond ring should be twice. Uh, your month's salary, so two months' salary is what they expect you to spend on an engagement ring. God, and then and these things are super expensive, and diamonds are everywhere, everywhere, all the time. That is true. Yeah. And, I, I mean, yeah, a nice clear diamond looks awesome, but for the price, give me cubic zirconia. That's just how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. It serves the same function. There, I mean, and I think that's... We don't value things like that That's as millennials. True. We don't value as much material. The actual stuff. relationship is what we value. Yeah. I want to talk about the next one. What? Large We're turkeys? We're killing large turkeys. What? And here's the thing. I have to admit, I seem, maybe it's the nostalgia. Yeah. I do seem to remember, like, during Thanksgiving time. Mm-hmm. Big turkeys. Like, I, I seem to remember, like, there was a lot of turkey meat. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, you can still get them 15 pounds of huge turkeys, but... But why is it saying that? Yeah, it says many people prepare a very large turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, but not millennials. According to Bloomberg, this generation prefers smaller birds, and they are more cognizant of food waste, and they want their turkeys to be free-range and organic. I mean, like, yeah, if the price wasn't $5 (laughs) more, sure. But, I mean... Well, what they're saying is we we like... we're, We're fucking, like... You know, high and mighties. We like quail and shit is what they're trying to say with that smaller bird. And yeah, it says people are starting to understand it's, it's not, not natural, natural to, to grow, grow turkeys <laughs> up to 30 pounds. Yeah. Who thinks it's natural? Whoever thought that was natural? <laughs> uh, you have to think about a turkey growing to 30 pounds. It's like a turkey that they're just forcing to eat. Any <laughs> any ones you want to talk about? <laughs> okay, apparently we're killing restaurants like Hooters. Wait, there's more than one kind of restaurant? <laughs> I, I, I always I, thought it was just I, Hooters. I thought it was just Hooters, but it says, according to research by Pornhub, of all people, millennials are not anywhere near as into boobs as their elders. This has yeah. caused a decline in restaurants like Hooters and hundreds of chesty servers are finding their jobs at risk. Yeah, you know why? Why? Dude, it's objectification it's, of women. I mean, like, you clearly, blank. like, Me Too is has got to end the restaurants. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, I understand the girls want to get good tips and stuff like that. So they'll, if they're willing to do it, that's their own prerogative. It really is. It is, but at the same time, how many of them are young and the only real job they can get is at a restaurant? And maybe they know, hey, yeah, I'm a little busty. I work at this particular restaurant that's going to flaunt it. I'll get better tips, and it's something they feel like they have to do. Yeah. I was actually, I was friends with a girl in college who was a waitress at Hooters, and she, like, tried to keep it a secret because she was embarrassed about the job. Yeah. So, I mean, I bet a lot of the girls But she made good money doing it, so, I mean, she was, you know. I don't know, man. A bunch of perverted old guys. I don't know. That's stereotyping as well. No, it's not. When, when, <laughs> anytime. I've only been to a strip club, like, twice. Yeah. And both times... I think I was well, I think that's the youngest person there. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that we're killing strip clubs, too, because it's Probably. just like, I mean, why pay money to just go watch something I can watch for free online? That's true, but there is yeah. something about being there in person. I mean, I guess so, yeah. I mean, I've seen things for a dollar that <laughs> whew, whew, would, would shock the most delicate ears of our listeners. Uh, I mean, like, it's like when we went yeah. <laughs> that time and yeah. she like grabbed my head and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, man. <laughs> so yeah, we've had some crazy experiences. I mean, you know, we're not averse to that kind of no, stuff. No, but we're just, I mean, yeah. it does make sense that it's killing the, bre- I just can't believe the word restaurant. Like, yeah, breast Hooters. We're yeah. killing Hooters. I yeah. can't imagine there's more like it. But going back, I, I do want to cover this one, uh, mm-hmm. that apparently we're killing divorce as well. And this is going back to what I was saying about the cohabitation uh, before marriage and stuff like that. I think that plays a large role in it. Um, hell, I, this might actually say it. It says millennials may be, this is off of Ranker, by the way. Uh, millennials may be allegedly killing relationships, but in the process, they're also killing divorce. A not yet peer reviewed study. Okay. Well, take it with a grain of salt. Found that from 2008 to 2016, divorces in the U.S. dropped by a rate of 18%. Cohen posited that women are the primary catalyst in the downward trend, citing higher education, financial stability, and better health care for women overall, which decreases not only their likelihood to marry at a young age, but also decreases the risk of divorce. Mar- see, and again, marry at a young age. Yeah. But see, I think the main reason why we're not marrying at a young age is because we're crippled well, no, I, by I mean, student debt. That could be true, but it's a good thing. You know, our student I think a debt lot of the, is over a trillion a dollars. I didn't know that. Yes. Over a trillion dollars of our national debt is student loans. And what are we spending that money on? A border wall? War. Space war? Space Space, space force. force. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would join the Space Force. I, was, I mean, come on. Starship Troopers, man. Hell yeah, man. It Fight says, uh, but it goes on to say, one of the reasons for the decline is that the married population is getting older and more highly educated. Marriage is more and more of an achievement of status rather than something that people do regardless yeah. of how they're doing. And I agree with that because weddings are fucking expensive, man. Like, people spend thousands of dollars. People go into debt now, just hold on. to get Some married. people get carried away. Yes, they for- they get so caught up in the in the party or the in tradition the and stuff. stuff they yeah. don't. They don't take time to remember the event, the whole reason behind it. Yeah. You can have a very nice small wedding and have just as much fun. See, I would, I would, when I get married, if I get married, Mm. I think I'll spend the least amount on the wedding and spend most of the money on the reception. Yeah. 
Cause I'd rather have a huge, I'd rather have a small ceremony mm-hmm. and a huge party afterwards. I mean, I've than thought the about, other way around. I've thought about doing like an elopement style wedding and just like going on vacation somewhere, getting married somewhere else, and then having a huge party when we come back home. No, it would be like the marriage and the honeymoon all at once, and then we have the party. No, so. why? I'm your best man. Damn it! I'm the. You, you- want to come and be a witness? Please, because <laughs> listen, you are my only chance of being the best man at somebody's oh, wedding. On. Nobody, well, I'm never, nobody I'm never else gonna be nobody's, ever. I'm never going to be anybody's best man. Yeah, you are. No. That's harsh. Of course you're going to be my best man, dude. Well, I mean. Who else would I ask? Well, yeah, true. <laughs> true. I didn't think about it being reciprocal, James. <laughs> well, no, it's not reciprocal. You're like my brother. I'd ask you anyway. <laughs> Even if you didn't have me as your best man, I'd ask you to be mine. Yeah. Yeah. You're my one shot at being a best man. As long man. as you don't make me wear a bow tie or a white tux. Dude, you guys tell me what to wear. I don't say what you wear. You guys say what you wear. No. no I was thinking of just getting a nice suit and going. Yeah. Going to Vegas? My go- maybe in September? Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe September 20th wedding at Area 51? Yeah. You could have an alien officiant. Yeah, this is a sneak, <laughs> sneak preview of our next podcast for the uh, for the hot takes. Yeah, again. This- Ooh. Yeah, it was a fun one. It, it was. was a fun one. Uh, but you, you guys will will see that in a week or so. I think. Yeah, I think from this. So, um, anything else you want to add about Juvenoia, James? Like, I mean, we've talked about how it's how it's mostly fake. There's no real sure science behind it. Yeah, it's basically just we're in two different stages of our lives and we have different values. You know what? There is a good point to make. What? So millennials, Gen Gen Zers. Yeah. Maybe take it a little easier on the baby boomers and the older ones, huh? Like, they're afraid. Yeah. As we kind of said, they're heading into the twilight of their life. It's getting toward the end of the se- end of the series. Yeah. And like, they're you know they don't know how to handle. Who knows how to really handle that kind of yeah. stuff? And I, I, my biggest thing that I want to talk about is just try not to fall into that pitfall of judging something that the younger generation values negatively oh, man, just because you will. have. The, but. But try not to is my thing. Like, I think that you're going to have a predisposition to. You're going to be suspicious of those teenagers that are hanging out in the Walmart parking lot. But you know damn well that teenagers in your generation was doing the same thing. And they didn't mean any harm doing it. My thing is music. I can't get over music. Well, yeah. I definitely fall into the pitfall of, like, today's music is nothing. Well, music is actually something that's proven to have changed quite dramatic. Well, pop music in particular. We still make very innovative music. It's just that it's not as popular. Popular music pop is pop music. Pop music has stayed the same. N- well, it's no, it's become more of the same type of stuff over the last few decades, and that's just because producers are getting better at re- like getting what, that specific, okay, this is what gets their attention, this is what works, this yeah. is what works. Build Do ups, predictive stuff. Yeah. And didn't because didn't our we, brains love it. Like I our can't brains remember who light that was. up. We might have to throw it in at the end. What Vsauce? But no, you, no. Uh, you told me because you read an article about this about a producer mm-hmm. or songwriter, and he wrote for like almost every pop artist out yeah, right now. It's uh, so it makes sense if one person is writing all of these it's songs. A Swedish guy for all of these people. Yeah, I can't. And of, think of course, his name. they're going to be similar. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, he writes them for like I mean, Katy Perry. Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift, like Ed all Sheeran, these big I think. ones. Yeah, just everybody that's that's gotten huge, you know, he's been behind it. I, I don't want to say it's Dr. Luke, though. I think Dr. Luke's from America. Maybe. But it's a Swedish producer that that's written all of these big hit songs. I mean Yeah. You know. The big the big music studios, they they so pretty much why, control what you that's hear. That's kinda why yeah. pop stays the same. Yeah. I so would, I mean there yeah. there are examples that, you know, are you know, affirmative when it comes to like judging new things over old things, like yes, there's less musical diversity in pop music. That is a proven fact. But what I'm saying is is like not all of these things are justified in just putting it through that lens immediately, mm-hmm. without question. Well, that's true. You're like, hmm, am I you know, when I'm looking at these young teenagers you know, post on their like TikToks or whatever, and they make those. And we we view them, we call them like super cringy videos and stuff like that. Okay, because it's just I want to I want to make a strong yeah. point here. Yeah, except for you, Alana, we actually <laughs> like your TikToks. Yeah, I actually you do hard hard work, and it's appreciated. Yeah, I've shown I've sh- I've actually shown people that I know um, like her TikTok stuff. So so yeah, we're yeah. not saying you make cringy no. TikToks. No, well, I mean, I've actually thought about starting to get in on a little bit of that. Maybe I think we should get a Twitter for the show. Yeah, I do. Yeah, we need to get a Twitter. 
Um, but you know, I don't think that we're killing these industries. Like, you know, I don't think it's like we're consciously targeting certain things that we don't like. It's, well, it's just not that we're killing it. We it's have more access we to information handed. about these companies too. And we yeah. know what we value. We value, well, our values, yeah. you know, and, and if also companies what we don't were handed that, yeah. is what we have to deal with. Yeah. Like we weren't handed a great economy. We weren't handed a lot of, of these things. You know, like government grants to help you get, you know, yeah. nice homes and stuff like that. It is and it is like, you know, we've made jokes, but it is fact that like, yeah, baby boomers, you could go to college and have a family all on like $50,000 a year. Yeah. But you there's there's literally no way to do that. Yeah. I mean, anymore. Yeah. And I mean, even with just a small apartment like with me and Brittany, I mean, you know, we're around like 50,000 a year, mm -hmm. something like that. And it's just like, even at that point, it's like, it's hard to scrape by sometimes. You're still living yeah. paycheck to paycheck. It's hard to, you know, build up a savings and stuff. And like, I really actually need to get on a 401k quiz, you know, regardless if, uh, social security is going to be around by the time we're old. I do want to have some sort of, you know, something. cushion. Yeah. So that needs to start happening. I'm, ah, the Gen Z is a killing the social security. <laughs> closer and closer I get to 30, the more it worries me. But, uh, don't even remind me, dude. I turn 28 next month. Yeah. And just me knowing that I'm never going to pay off my student loan until I'm in my 40s is really? just it's probably, bad. yeah, it's bad. I know there are people with like hundreds of thousands yeah, of dollars. Yeah, I'm glad in that debt. I'm not that in debt, but, uh, there's a, that's a whole different conversation. Something that I'd actually like to talk about on I hot takes, you know, is the student debt crisis because a lot of people are seeing it as a similar to the housing bubble. But it's going to burst. Well, see, the problem is we can't default on payments for student loans. They don't let you go bankrupt on it. So that's why they said the bubble can theoretically get bigger and bigger and never pop. Because we can't we can't default I, well, on it. It, could, we, it would have it could, to be like a large-scale like forgiveness from the federal government. Or it could pop in the way of people stop going to college. Yeah. Well, yeah, true that. Because, I mean, college rates, I want to say, are still going up, though. Yeah. More and more more and more kids it's are because a lot of people still push the idea that you need college to get a good yeah. job. But when you when you go through life and you learn that, that was all a lie, it gives you a bit of a disillusion. Well, it's not a and lie. I, I think college is better. I think the better advertisement would be college is if you want a a uh, specific job, like if you want to go into medicine, like you want to be a pharmacist. Yeah. Go to college. Yeah. Like uh, for a spe a specified profession. Yeah. You would need college, but like I'm a I'm a manager at a pharmacy. Yeah. Well, front store of a pharmacy. Yeah. I didn't go to college. Yeah, and I mean and I'm I went still to college. The corporate ladder. Well, hell, I went to college and got a degree in uh, philosophy, which a lot of baby boomers will scoff at. But let me tell you, my intentions for going in to get that degree was to eventually become a college professor, which is, I mean, a good paying job. No it time for love, Doctor Armstrong. <laughs> I mean, I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go get my bachelor's, get my master's, get my PhD. But once I got into, you know, the end of my bachelor's degree program and I saw how much debt I was accruing, it just scared Jump me. Shit. And also, um, just seeing the like actual rates of hiring for those professions were super slim. I mean, I would probably have to relocate to a new part of the country to get a job. Yeah. And I mean, this is all after getting in a large amount of debt going through masters and uh -huh. you know, a PhD program and, and everything like that. So I didn't go in, back in and now I work as a, an IV technician at a hospital and I make decent money doing that, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a good, it's, I really like my job. Look, so we're not trying to demonize college or other no. things, but like, no, we're not trying to say that, but it is, it is something people I think are going to consider. Now. Well, it's something that our generation kind of bonds over. Yeah. It's we're bonded in that, uh, uneasiness Memes, that depression yeah true yeah and we we openly acknowledge suicide yeah which that's like a whole different topic which is really interesting is the whole dark humor about like suicide and stuff like that because there's actually things that that show that it could actually help our generation cope with depression by you know, saying like feeling suicidal thoughts is sort of natural in certain times in your life. Yeah. And knowing that it's a natural phenomenon can Might help you take control scary. of it. Yeah. And it can make you take control of it and maybe make you go and actually seek help instead of thinking something's wrong with you. But those are going to be yeah. future episodes that yeah. we will do. But it's, it's super interesting. And those are things that our generation is bringing to the table. Like every new generation brings something new to the table. Like what Gen Z is going to bring to the table when we're older, I don't know. But the latest and greatest iPhones. 
Yeah, yeah, something. Like super iPhones or something. I mean, you know, they could be the generation that brings forth AI, which would, in your book, make them... Which the will the worst <laughs> be the worst generation on record, because <laughs> AI will kill us all. Yeah, if you listen to the first Wow That's Deep, where we talked about that. It Gen- will end <laughs> us. Hmm. I'm a prophet. <laughs> Just saying. But it's... Juvenoy is something that I just wanted to kind of highlight in these episodes so that people can be aware of it. People can know where it comes from and not that baby boomers are just out to get you by, you know, insulting you and stuff like that. Like it's something that they're probably, it's probably something that's pre-programmed into our genes. And in the subconscious too. They're not probably even aware of why they're doing it. Now I will say the whole aspect of evolutionary biology playing a role in juvenoia is not yet founded. Like there's not a link for it, but that's where they're, that's what their hypothesis is. And they make, I mean, there isn't a whole lot of study in it, to be honest, but, but just know that the generational gaps that they have, the 20 year intervals that was created. That's a construct. Uh, it was created in the 1920s as a marketing campaign to get, to get young adults to spend their money, to spend their money on their products because they had jobs at that time. Before then we were agrarian society. We didn't have mm-hmm. much technological improvement within a, a generational, you know, span. So there wasn't as much, I don't think animosity. It was probably still more of the, you know, they think they know it all. Yeah, maybe. Or, you know, I'm sure there was always that. But when you get into the the fact that, you know, the generation before us, they had rotary phones. You know, they had party lines. I'm just I'm just saying, like, the technology has changed so much. It's such a rapid change yeah, in culture. it really is, man. You know, we, we just value things differently. I mean, I know? guess all we have to say is that we didn't start the fire. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and really our generation is doing a positive trend to the world. Like our, our crime rates are down. Like there's all kinds of statistics that are yeah. down. Like STDs are going down. Um, what, what else was it? Pregnancy, teen pregnancy rates. Uh, drug use going down. Drug exercise use. going up. Yes. So, I mean, there's positive changes that are happening with our generation. It's just that you don't see the press really cover that. Yeah, they I like mean, to just, you know, shit on us. Because the times they are changing. Yeah. Know? But. We hope you've enjoyed this. Give us a like on our Facebook page. Yeah, check us out on Facebook. You can find us at JRam and Billy Show on Facebook. And I'll probably make that our Twitter handle, too. I'll go yeah. ahead and make it a, make a Twitter. JRam and Billy Show? Yeah, at JRam and Billy Show. I'm going to go ahead and call it because I'm sure nobody's got that. <laughs> they better not. Yeah, they better not. That'd, <laughs> that'd be, be weird. weird. Yeah, that'd, that'd be super specific. We also have a YouTube channel. Yeah, the JRam and Billy Show. And you can find that link in the description below. We have some videos up, some Let's Plays, and some all of our podcasts are posted there, too. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, if you haven't already, check out our other podcast episodes. We have Hot Takes, where we talk about controversial topics. We have other episodes of Wow, That's Deep, where we get into philosophical some deep dives. More like meta stuff, like what this episode was about. And we also do a retro review, mm-hmm. which we do about you know pretty much any movie, let's say, 90s and earlier. Yeah. Older maybe, films. Maybe some early 2000s. Yeah, and we've been going through the Friday the 13th series, which has been a wild ride. And <laughs> if you haven't already, definitely listen to those episodes. They're a lot of fun. They're very entertaining. Maybe I'm just biased because I'm I'm being nostalgic about it. Nah, man. <laughs> I listen, I've listened back and I cracked I cracked up again. Yeah, there was some pretty funny moments, you know, non-decomposing Posing water zombie dad. dad. Yeah, we even did a song on one of them. Definitely check those out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... Um, the the end message that I kind of want to give here is just be cognizant of the the natural thinking process of your brain. You know, try to override those notions and not immediately look at the next generation in some sort of negative light just because they're a little bit different than you. You know, yeah. it's just like our values were different than our parents. Their values are going to be different than ours. So. And, th- and we can help you do that if you go to Podbean and listen to us there. Yeah. Or Spotify, we're there too. Yeah. Give us so, a follow. Yeah. So without further ado, this is J Ram. And this is Billy. Have a good night. 